But big news spreads via social media, and Blake Griffin said he found out on Twitter, like everybody else, he'd been traded to Detroit. Um, uh, Ryan in West Bloomfield, I found out on Facebook, my sister was in labor hours before anyone let me know. My ex-wife also called me before my family. Uh, from an unnamed texture, guys, I found out my sister passed away on Facebook. Worst day of my life. That's terrible. Yeah, that, that I, I mean, I got to tell you, you seemed very, very um, adamant about this, not how things should happen, et cetera, et cetera. I've kind of come to say it, it's America in 2018, and unfortunately that is how it happens. However, deaths on social media, somebody close to you seems really, um, really wrong. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Bennett on a cell. Hi, Bennett. Hi. How are you doing, guys? Okay. I um, I agree with both of you guys. Um, it's it's the way of the of the world now with this instant information, and it's it's kind of sad that family doesn't get notified first. But I'll give you a, an example of of social media uh, working in reverse, so to speak. Okay. On January twenty second this year. I saw a post that one of the actresses in a film I'm, I'm doing passed away, and I was blown away. I mean, I was freaked out. And then the next post shows her, um, uh, what is uh, the death notice? Uh, the obituary? She died, she, yes, the obituary, very good. She died on December 5th, and nobody made a notation or nobody posted it anywhere on social media until January 22nd, six weeks later, I'm like, what do I do? What do I, <laughs> you know, how do I notify the rest of the cast and crew? And it was, it was just bizarre. She wow. had a Facebook page and, and so did her daughter's 22 year old daughter, but, but just, it never worked. So, you know, it's got its, its positives and its negatives, but communications are, uh, you know, don't get me started about how what? people text and then they don't respond and, you know, it's right. Just, I, I find I find it really weird though. Like if it's a family member situation, that it, it would hit social media before it hits the family members. You know, I mean, because what what are you posting it on social media for? If they go, hey, you know, my my brother just died. Uh, you know, you, you would tell everybody would you, in the family, right? I mean, you tell people in the family, and why would you? I mean, oh, no, he just died. I got I. I, I, I I need to quick post this on Instagram or, or Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, it seems a little awkward there. I, I Again, the reason we're talking about this is because Blake Griffin found out on social media he'd been traded, which, you know, I think that's just what happens this day and age. I don't know if you follow the Alex Smith trade where he got traded to Washington for a third-round pick and Kendall Fuller, the young corner, uh, promising player. Fuller tweets out a couple nights ago, nah, it's not me, I don't think. I'm on here trying to find out just like y'all. Next tweet, man, I'm safe. I ain't got traded. Next tweet, is the Homer Simpson backing into the bushes? GIF, me on Twitter after tweeting all that, then finding out I got traded. <laughs> so he was tweeting on social media, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me, and then he tweeted, wait, oh, no, it's me. Like, how, is, how does it get to that point? How does your agent not tell you? Or how does a general manager not tell you? How does someone, at least from the general manager's office, say, hey, I'm, you know, so and so with the sources, Redskins, just to I, let you know you got traded? In this day and age with sources and stuff, it just it gets out. It gets out. The team can't call you. They really can't call you until the deal is done. Because if something happens and then they gotta take it back, hey, sorry, we we traded you, and you're like, oh, man, and then they call back 20 minutes later and go, trade fell through. You're still with us. How do you think that guy's going to well, feel that, about his I, team? I, get so, a, I understand that, but, I mean, again, you make a trade, it, it's consummated. How is it with that, within five minutes you haven't contacted the person who you just traded? Them? Because people start reporting it before it's a done deal? That's why. Get, I mean, how does it get to that point? How does it get to that point? It's a done deal. I mean, it's I mean, a done deal. I, that, you and I know. I mean, in this business, there's stuff that gets reported that's premature all the time. Like right now, Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN basketball writer, is reporting finalizing a deal to acquire Miritich, lead sources say, for the Pelicans. They're finalizing. This deal isn't even done yet. Does Miritich get a phone call? Okay, I don't know. But I'm here's the saying, thing. But at least, right? all right, but this has been in the, in, in the works for a while now. He was traded and, the other day, apparently, and they had to take that back. I'm saying, but at least this, this stuff has been reported that so-and-so is on the market, right? 
so at some point, if you see that your name is in the market, like, wait a minute, there's rumors that I'm going to be traded? Usually you'll have some kind of contact with the team, and the general manager will say, well, you know, we are looking at all options, and yes, you were one of those options, and we'll let you know if it happens. At least you got that kind of head, heads up. With the Blake Griffin thing, it seemed like it, it seemed like it came out of nowhere, even though the Pistons admitted, uh, Boyer admitted for yesterday. Like six, seven days, right? Yeah. At least. And remember when we were texting each other, guys, in this group text, the first text was serious talks with Blake Griffin and the Clippers, right? Yep. And then within what? Ten minutes later, the deal was done. Yep. So that's maybe, how it by happens. the way, maybe that's what Blake Griffin also saw the same thing yes, he saw. Exactly. Where it wasn't finalized, but that's the first he'd heard of it. And yeah, I don't have any problem with people finding out that they're rumored to be traded in, 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 tw- in Twitter or on Twitter. I have a problem that immediately after the trade is made official that that there isn't an effort or enough of an effort made by a team to get in touch with the player or the agent has to get in touch with them and and let them know, yeah, dude, you've just been traded. Well, either way, it's uh, it's something I think we kind of have to get accustomed to because – well, And and remember this, too. This is also a victim of of, – Blake Griffin also is very potentially a victim of reporters trying to be first. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. But but you say we have to get accustomed to this. I don't know that we have to get accustomed to. Why can't we get accustomed to trying to to, to make sure that this doesn't happen? Um. Oh, it's inevitable. We're on social media. I mean, yeah. I guess I guess it just doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. I, I mean, it'd be nice to get the phone call, but at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me that much. Sorry. I don't apologize to me. Well, I mean, I know it's again it, why I'm a better person than you. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so there is other news here going on, and, and this is something that I think people are really going to hand hate. This I think everybody's going to hate. Yesterday, Formula One Racing made an announcement that they were getting rid of the Grid Girls. Saw that. Now, what are the Grid Girls? The Grid Girls are basically models who dress up as sponsors for, like, the cars, whatever the car's sponsor is, and stand around the car and, you know, take pictures with people. And I don't know that they served any actual purpose other than it was, they were Formula One's cheerleaders. But they would dress in skimpy outfits with with sponsors' logos on them. The managing director of Formula One said the following about canceling this. Over the last year, we've looked at the number of areas which we felt needed updating so as to be more in tune with our vision for this great sport. While the practice of employing grid girls has been a staple of Formula One Grand Prix for decades, we feel this custom does not resonate with our brand values and clearly is at odds with modern day societal norms. We don't believe the practice is appropriate or relevant to Formula One and its fans old and new across the world. Now, obviously this is not, they're not cheerleaders per se. But it's as much of a cheerleader as they can have. As in much that of sport. a cheerleader as they have in that sport. And I do wonder, and I, you and I have wondered about stuff like this moving forward. We're really, really, really sensitive to the objectification of women in this society. And is it going to get to so much so that something like this becomes the norm? I, I've kind of been waiting for this story to hit. I didn't know what league would be the first to do it. Uh, I know there are times where we have taken complaints from listeners over some of the stuff we say and do. And yet we're all, I mean, for us, I just keep thinking it's in good fun, but I am curious where this, what this is going to lead to. Well, it's, I mean, it's something to think about because in one hand, if the women involved don't mind that there's that perception out there that they're being objectified, if they're, if they're cool with it, then why should anybody have an issue with it? If it's, if it's, if it's them that's being objectified. Yep. In other people's eyes. If it's not in their eyes, then who cares? But we're talking about the greater picture, the bigger picture. And and this is something that will probably be brought up. And, you know, will cheerleaders soon be outlawed? I, it was funny because you mentioned that. Do the people care? Do the individuals? 
grid girls are complaining. Women who had jobs as grid girls don't like it. Well, then what are they doing with getting a job as a grid girl? No, they, they're complaining that their jobs are being eliminated. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm they're sorry. saying I, they, they don't like this policy. And you know, it's kind well, of what does it lead to next? You know, and, and the sport is taking a stance that they think that there's too much negative attention mm-hmm. towards us or that there will be in the future. So they're trying to nip it in the bud and move on.